Hello, my name is Samuel Flournoy, and today I'm in the world-renowned Crystal Bridges Museum in Bentonville, Arkansas. Today I'll be showcasing to you a spectacular piece of American art called World's Columbian Exposition by the famous artist Theodore Robinson. World's Columbian Exposition was finished in 1894 as a landscape in the actual World's Columbian Exposition, which was a massive world fair held in Chicago in 1893. Its purpose was to celebrate 400 years since Columbus's first arrival in the Americas, as well as to showcase the great inventions of the day that were being produced from America's rapidly growing industrial sector. The artist Theodore Robinson had visited the fair and was greatly impressed by much of what he saw. The buildings used were mostly temporary, but were set up in the orderly neoclassical style, which made heavy use of arches, domes, and columns laid out in geometric symmetry. They were also covered in white stucco, which made the buildings seem to illuminate against the rest of Chicago, especially since the fairground was one of the first cities to be fully lit by electricity. This led the public to call the fairground the White City, and Theodore Robinson wished to capture all of its beauty with the strokes of the paintbrush. As you can see in the painting, the artist has created a real sense of a wide open space, primarily through a technique known as One Point's Perspective. Think of a time when you were driving down a straight road that was so open you could see miles down it. Did you ever notice that the width of the road in front of you seemed to be getting narrower over the further you looked down it? And if you could see far enough down it, that it eventually vanished into a single dot? Of course, the road was not actually shrinking. Its foreshortening was just an illusion caused when your perspective was kept at a distance. The artist, however, used this natural phenomenon to his advantage by foreshortening the distance, primarily the width of the river and the height of the large central building, as your view extends upwards and to the right of the picture plane. Although you can't actually see far enough for the river and the building to converge into a single dot, which is also known as a vanishing point, the viewer instead sees a grand obelisk-like tower in the distance that acts as the focal point for the background of the painting. By using such large objects to display and anchor this one point's perspective, and by using smaller objects like trees and a flagpole to display the foreground, the artist has managed to give testament to the massive size of the actual Columbian Exposition in Chicago. The painting can feel larger than it actually is, which is only 25 by 30 inches, or roughly 2 by 2.5 feet. Another notable feature of the painting is the colors that are used. White and other light colors are used heavily on the buildings and man-made objects, but even the natural objects like trees, the water, and the sky are painted in a fairly light green and blue-green colors, even though most blues and many greens tend to be darker in color. The lightness of the colors is referred to as its value, and the lighter the value, the more illuminated the objects in the painting appear. Much of the landscape is painted in this light value, partially to accurately portray the white city as it appeared in the white stucco plastered onto the buildings, and partially to give the viewer a sense of the atmosphere of the actual event, in which the people felt amazed and happy about a bright future that the progress of the Industrial Revolution was promising them. It is a feeling many people have today about modern theme parks, where the attractions, lights, and sounds amazes and provides a leisurely experience for all of its participants. A very special and fairly unique aspect of this painting is that it incorporates two different styles of painting. It was painted by an American Impressionist painter towards the end of Impressionism's heyday. However, although technically an Impressionist painting, as most of the objects are painted in a way that gives the illusion of a coarse texture, the buildings are not strictly painted in this manner. Instead, they are painted in a very crisp and with clear definitions in a manner that is reminiscent of the older neoclassical style painting. This creates a stark and noticeable contrast between the white, shimmering architecture of the main buildings, which are also designed using neoclassical architecture, and the more naturalistic landscape of the foreground and right of the riverbank. Using these two techniques side by side significantly highlights the main focus of the painting, the white city of the World's Columbian Exposition. The rest of the painting serves mostly to enhance and beautify the city, and at this it does a spectacular job. The trees, water, sky, and masses of people, when painted in the Impressionist style, are not given clear definitions and appear to be in movement, giving life to the city. Thus, the two styles complement each other quite well in this setting. A good way to fully appreciate this art piece is to compare it to a similar Impressionist artwork done around the same time. This is Paris at Twilight by Chide Hassam, complete in 1887, just seven years before Theodore Robinson painted World's Columbian Exposition. It also uses one-point perspective by having the left side of the street shrink and move to the right of the picture plane the further you look down the street, although it's not nearly as pronounced, which results in a smaller field of view. This smaller view is appropriate for the painting, which is only focused on a down-to-earth perspective of a string single street corner, and not the magnificence of an entire city. The colors also have a darker value to them, which simulates fading daylight, as opposed to the lighter value of colors in World's Columbian Exposition, which simulate full daylight. The color values of Paris at Twilight create a more down-to-earth 
everyday or even melancholy feeling that the artist is trying to convey in this scene that would have been a common sight to many Parisians. Finally, instead of using different styles of painting to highlight the primary focus of the painting, the artist instead paints much of the background in dark shadow. This obscures the non-important views of the painting and focuses our attention to the primary focus of the painting, which is the people on the street corner. The two paintings are both indicative of Impressionist cityscapes of the late 1800s, but convey two very different experiences and are quite distinct from one another. I find World's Columbian Exposition to be a fascinating artwork. It is a happy painting, one which celebrates great accomplishments and beautiful scenery. Through its colors and use of perspective, it catches the eye with its grand appearance and amazes the viewer with its brilliant lightness and open appearance. It also manages to take two very different art styles and have them complement each other, a feat not easily done by a single artist. As I strolled by this artwork for the first time, I couldn't help but stop for a few minutes and gaze at this painting. Not only was it conveying to me pretty colors put on a canvas, but it was also conveying the feeling of excitement in the air as the exposition, the brilliance of the architecture and cityscape that greeted the visitors from across the world, and the hope for a bright future that those that the ex exposition shared. Such is the experience of World's Columbian Exposition.